Howdy. No. Yosh. Ah! Hi. <laughs> Welcome to my first, uh, I guess, work in progress video. Yeah, we'll call it that. I'm working on Mista from Jojo Part 5 and Bernadetta Von Varley from Fire Emblem Three Houses. I actually have Mista right here. I kind of gave up a little bit. I was sewing like a lot um, a couple months ago and then suddenly I lost all of my speed and it just wasn't, it wasn't really working as well as I wanted to. Also, I hadn't, I had done all this work to get this really, really pretty crisscross pattern, but I didn't make a mock-up, which I tend to do. <laughs> well, I didn't make a mock-up out of this fabric. I had used this pattern for other shirts that had stretch, which is very important. <laughs> So this has zero, zero stretch at all. It's like, and the fabric already kind of didn't have a lot of stretch and then I added this stuff to it. Zero give at all. It fits, it's just not very comfortable. And I have to add the, the red bits and the cuffs and the turtleneck and it's just gonna make it even smaller. So I don't really know how I'm gonna fix that. Maybe one day I will. But first I wanna talk about Bernadetta cause that's really what I'm excited about. So I got my pattern from Indigo underscore Jinjo on Instagram. She sells patterns on Etsy. I'll put the link in the bottom. I really, really recommend going to her store and checking it out. And it's only maybe 10 to $15 and you can download immediately, print it out and start getting to work. I did a little clip yesterday actually showing you everything that I got for her and I will go to that now. Pew. Howdy, it is like 1 a.m. and... <sighs> so today I'm working on my Bernadetta Von Varley cosplay. Uh, she's from Fire Emblem Three Houses. She's from the Black Eagles house and she's kind of controversial actually, but I really like her and I think everyone should, uh, but that's just me. Uh, for me, I just really relate to her a lot and she's cute. <laughs> Do I need like many reasons to like a character and want to cosplay her? She's just wonderful and adorable and I love her a lot. As for fabric, first I looked at each piece that I would need and I figured I needed a lot, a lot of black fabric for her. Oh, this is one of the ways that I organize my works in progress. I have them in these big bags. Really, this could hold onto a thing. I really like them for organizing fabric while I'm like in the middle of something because I don't want to be putting away fabric and then I can't tell which black is which one first. I needed a lot of black fabric. I think I got like five yards, which is probably too much, but I figured I use a lot of black fabric. This is kind of like a bottom weight. It's from like the Casa collection. Actually, I wanted to mention the cosplayer Oya Sumiyu from Instagram. Oya Sumiyu. When I was looking for references and other Bernadetta cosplayers and to see what they did, I reached out to her about which fabric she was using because I was having some issues. And this is not the exact same fabric that she uses, but it's really similar. I like the effect of the black. And I got a lot of it. Um, next, it's really hot in here. For the front facing, I have two options. I picked up this because I thought the color was a perfect, perfect match. However, I am a stupid because on the other side, it is faux, faux suede or something, which is unfortunate because I don't think that I'll be, to be able to use the heat and bond on it. So that sucks. I'll see if I'm able to. Um, if anything, I'll just have to repurpose this. It's not a lot of fabric, so I don't feel like I lost too much. 
it just kind of is annoying that I didn't see that. And next, I just, honestly, I got this at the remnants section um, as a second option after I realized that was faux fur. I thought that this was a pretty decent color match. And I also noticed that the other people who were cosplaying the Black Eagles with me and also other Fire Emblem cosplays, um, the gold that they were using were a, was a lot more reflective and I thought that it would match them a lot better. I picked up some Heat and Bond um, because also I saw Oyasumi, o Oyasumi use it to make her decals or de de decals, whatever. I saw her use it so I got it because I thought that was like genius, you know? I got some basic black and gold thread. These are both uh, Coates, I think. Coates and Clark, Coates brand. Um, this is 250 yards. This one is 400 because you need a lot more of it. You use a lot more of it. So I thought I'd just get the biggest one. Lastly, all the little bits and bobs. This is for the weird little thingies that she has in her sleeves. Everything I measured out before I went shopping um, at Joann's. This was actually purchased in January before the semester started because I thought I was going to be able to bang it all out at once, like before <laughs> the spring semester, but I wasn't able to unfortunately. And then I thought I would do it over spring break and our spring break was canceled. They gave us like a, a three day break or something like that and craziness was happening. So I was just too stressed out. And these are both, I don't know, this trim, the beauty guru thing, but it, it totally works. I can see why they did it. Oh yeah, I have a new camera. <laughs> if you can't tell, it's a lot better than my old one. Um, you can see the little details. Those are literally the same, except one is in gold and one is in black. I already actually started cutting out my pattern pieces. I also ordered this, the pattern online via Etsy a while ago, but now she has a real Bernadetta pattern. I was kind of using her other one and I was gonna put a zipper down the front and wear actually this hoodie <laughs> underneath it. But now she has a Bernadetta one. So if you want to follow her instructions like more clearly, I definitely recommend that you go look up what she has for Bernadetta because then it'll be purposely mapped out for our purposes. But I'm gonna be doing a little improvisation. This is also a lot of the Bernadetta cosplayers that I saw online was using the same I believe it's for like all the other girls, but really the only thing that you have to do differently for Bernadetta is put a zipper down the front or some kind of closure down the front so that you can have this. That's classy. Next on the agenda is what I already have done. All I had done, which I was kind of working backwards, and I have no idea why, was cut out my pattern pieces for the lining. I'm not gonna show you all the pattern pieces out of respect for uh, indigo underscore Jinjo, but I'll just show you guys what I'm doing and my process. That's really what this is about. I definitely, again, recommend that you go check out her Etsy store. She has so many patterns for like all the characters she has. I think she's working on Emperor Edelgard right now. If you like Fire Emblem, three houses specifically. Uh, you'd really enjoy her store. Also, this pattern was made to go with the Dangerous Ladies, I believe they're called. They're 3D printed like set. So I do have intentions on purchasing that as well and painting it later on. I had wanted to a little bit closer to when I needed it for a convention, but then every convention got canceled. So I'm just gonna order it whenever I need it, I guess. Psst. Hi. <laughs> it is Tuesday and today I actually voted. Um, we had the primaries in New York 
today. So as you can tell, it is the 23rd. So this is day two of actually working on Bernadetta. <laughs> Today's goal is just to like do something because I've just been staring at all this stuff for months. You know, like I have pattern pieces everywhere and I'm just not doing it. Like I mentioned before that I was on a really good like sewing, I guess binge, but then it died down because I had finals and just like quarantine depression was kicking my ass. Totally, I'm done with that. Yeah, this is the lining fabric. For some reason, I decided to do things backwards <laughs> and make the lining first. I think my idea was to make the lining first so that I wouldn't have to make a mock-up. Because that went so well <laughs> with this stuff. Actually, how do you guys, those of you who sew, do you guys usually keep the pieces that are cut out with the piece that it's cut out from. That's what I did, and I think that's one of the things that's just making the space so messy. <laughs> we shall see. I think actually, I turned the viewfinder around so that I can't see it. And I think it's easier to be like myself when it's like that. Do other people find that? Because I'm not so like self-conscious. My goal today is just to cut this out of the black fabric and do something. <laughs> Literally anything is better than doing nothing at this point, right? Right. <laughs> so now I'm gonna be cutting out the black fabric and probably some of my other fabric too, just to try to get the ball rolling and get some something done. So with my huge thing of black fabric, we're gonna cut out all the pieces from the pattern that say um, black on it, like the center front, the side front, the back, you know, everything that, unless it would be gold. Ideally, you would have uh, ironed your fabric, and I did, but it has been in a bag for a while. There's a lot of wind right now, you're seeing the curtain go back and forth. Um, because it's kind of like a tunnel because there's wind coming from this window out to that one and it actually feels really nice and cool but it's not like anything strange this fabric also has a little bit of give to it which I appreciate you also should figure out which way is the grain because cutting on the grain is not good. So for this fabric, the way I'm gonna check is by stretching it a little bit. Or um, another way you can check is by taking a little piece with your scissor and cutting this way and if it makes a clean line then that's the grain so this made a clean line you can't see it and so I know that the grain is going this way so I'm going to cut all my fabric like this way you know it'll say on your pattern piece which way the grain should be going that's another reason why I highly, highly recommend using patterns if you're inexperienced. It has a lot, a lot of useful information. Like why you shouldn't cut your fabric on the grain. When I lay down my patterns, I always feel like it's kind of like, like a jigsaw puzzle because I have to make it all fit nicely. I'm also trying to conserve a lot of this to make the pleated skirt. I really only want to, I want to keep it till like around here so that I have enough to work with as possible to make her skirt really flared out. If you didn't know this, even like a short pleated skirt takes tons and tons of material. It takes about three times the amount of like a normal fitted skirt, you know? I'll come back when I'm done. Now, it's time to cut. 
So I usually use a rotary cutter. Some combination of like a rotary cutter and a pair of scissors. I have this tiny, tiny-ish, well it's actually not that tiny, medium sized rotary cutter that I got at Michael Jackson's craft store a really long time ago. I actually got it before I started sewing, like seriously, and now it's my best friend. <laughs> Low energy thumbs up. Yum. Yosh. So, I just finished cutting out all my fabric except one piece. Um, that was my mistake. It's just one piece. I don't even need to have the fabric doubled. So, it's fine. I just, uh, I thought I had to cut it out with the gold fabric, but it was actually made out of black. Here is the gold. Ta -da. It is 11 o'clock and I think I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey yo. So today is Thursday and <laughs> I just had the most terrifying experience. Uh, I wouldn't say of my life, but pretty close. Like a flying bug. I'm like paranoid now just hits the wall behind my computer. It scared the shit out of me and I screamed. <laughs> so yeah, fabric. I'm pinning the lapels into the inter onto the interfacing before I cut it out and then I'm going to iron it. I just heard my oven finish preheating. I have a baked potato in there or a potato that will soon be baked because it scared me so bad. I feel like alive, like my blood is pumping. I'm gonna bake a potato and pin interfacing. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a wild pal. Ah! No, now I'm just imagining things. Write in the comments, what's the biggest bug you've ever seen? <laughs> um, it's basically the same thing four times because it's gonna be doubled. It's gonna be really sturdy because of this interfacing. For a long time, I didn't really know what interfacing did. Like, I didn't know what it was. I just thought that I had the idea of interfacing but I didn't know interfacing existed. I was like, how do they get those things to like stand straight up? And it's just really tough interfacing. I'm still in this room for you guys, so I can film this. Usually, once I saw a spider, I'm really glad that we find it, found it though, because um, at first she couldn't find it, and I was like, I am not coming back into this room for the next week <laughs> if we don't find that bug. Once I saw a spider in my room and I couldn't like, like I couldn't catch it and then I lost track of where it went and I literally slept in the bathroom. No joke. It's funny because like I really like, like I really like beetles and stuff outside, like seeing them in nature. I'm like, wow. The way, the way they take care of the plants, amazing. But <laughs> when it's like in my house or it's like in my face, that's where I flip my shit. By the way, a note on interfacing. <laughs> what I'm actually doing <laughs> is there's like, you're gonna notice when you buy your interfacing, there is a soft side and rough side. You wanna place your fabric on the rough side with the wrong side facing the interfacing like wrong side down because you don't want the right side to have the interfacing on it because it's going to be on the inside of whatever you're making 
One thing that's really funny about interfacing, actually. So if you've seen my Keith cosplay, Keith from Voltron, I have those like sacks on the side. And really what you should be using to shape those is a really tough interfacing. But I used cardboard because I didn't know what interfacing was. <laughs> if you like these videos, please, 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 like, like, interact with them. Because that's how I know that you guys are liking something. Like, you know, like, by comment and liking and so forth. Because I really, really am enjoying this because it gives me, like, incentive to keep working. So, now these all have interfacing on the back of it. I'm gonna do this with the rest of the gold pieces that need interfacing. Um, but, yeah. All this does is, let, it stiffens it. Once you heat this up, the adhesive kind of, like, glues and it stiffens, so it really, really helps. If you don't use interfacing, you're gonna wonder why your um, waistband keeps going like this and rolling, and it's just not a fun time. Just get some interfacing, I promise you. It's like a dollar a yard, and you wouldn't even use an entire yard. So I'm just gonna do that, and I'll talk to you afterwards.